this equipment and all of this investment, unfortunately, this is still a big part of the paving industry. Everyone's got wheelbarrows. We got six of them, flat tires, bent shoes. Been pushing these things for 40 years. I'm sick of pushing wheelbarrows. There's gotta be a better way. So I am so through with this thing. Let me show you how through I am with it. Have a nice life. Two on that truck, two on that truck, one on the other, one in the garbage. I'm throwing them all away. Morning world of asphalt. We got a new delivery today. Real excited. We got a new product. We are showcasing the world our new product. You know I consider myself an as asphalt efficiency expert. This has been 40 years in my brain because our job requires a lot of manual labor. We thought of this. We called up some very special people and we are hoping that we are going to change the industry help change the industry with this new product. We just had a delivery of this brand new 2021, actually, because this is two years in the making, supply chain issues, COVID, and this truck actually got held up at the Canadian border during the protest. So you probably saw it on the news. We finally got it. A couple winters ago, we had an idea. I picked up the phone. I called some very special people at a very special company. A mom and pop, family owned, small business. I shot them an idea and they said, we can do it. We didn't know that if this was gonna work, we were a little bit of guinea pigs, but we had a little confidence because we have ran this company's products before. We got a special day here and I'm hoping I'm going to uh, save a lot of backs with this product. So our brand new 2021 567 Peterbilt, we did a 14 foot, Trout River live bottom truck. We decided to do a six wheeler with a lift axle on it and not a tri axle. I'm sure people are gonna ask why not a tri axle and you're gonna know why in a minute. Anyone, there's a lot of guys out there that run these, that run live bottoms. We feel the Trout River is the best in the industry and if you can look at the workmanship alone, you can see why we use Trout River. It's gonna deliver asphalt, gravel, dirt, mulch, whatever you want to put in the back of this thing, it'll belt out without raising the body, without worry about tipping. And if you ever paved with a live bottom belt, um, they're awesome in the paver. Yeah. Awesome. Coming from someone on the back of the screen, Josh can attest to this. You could feel the difference when you're pushing a live bottom trailer. It's smooth, it's nonstop. You can even see the difference in the mat. It's just a continuous pour. And uh, it really makes a big difference. Paver operator. You can unload these trucks. Minutes. Minutes, seconds, seconds. This one here, 15 ton, 35 seconds. And you don't have to worry about? Trees, wires, tilting left and right. I mean, this thing is sweet. I don't have to worry about the truck at all. They steer, we give them the, the hand signal, or you'll see a little remote action soon. frees me up a lot to do right. the more important thing, which is run a paper. Right. So now we're gonna give you a quick walk around the truck. Matty, you wanna go in and fire it up? Come inside here, Shane. So the new 2021 567, so this thing's like Mercedes. You know we're Peterbilt guys. We got a good uh, con connect at the Pete store. They take care of us. Automatic, look at this. Digital dash, CB, radio, Bluetooth. Um, these 567s, we like these because they have good vision. You can see out of them. I mean, backing up this truck, you can see your back tire. That's a big thing. So I'm going to fire her up. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a couple of things about the live bottom truck. Obviously, you can see, you know, we, we, we like our red and our chrome. Trout River. I mean, look at the workmanship here. The paint is as good as the paint on the cab. I'm going to show you a couple of the functions now. Maddie, pop the gate open, please. That's your hydraulic gate right here. Josh, don't know, close the cover. So we did have some asphalt in this. We did do a demo, and it does work. Completely, I know mean, guys run these, so you, some people will be familiar with these. Completely seals the load. There's no weather on this whatsoever. We've been running our other 
Black Bottom trailer now for five or six years, and without question, every time he delivers a load, the asphalt five to ten degrees hotter than our other trucks that are covered well also, but nothing's going to beat that tarping system. Having closed the gate, I'm not going to run the belt right now because there's some asphalt in there, and uh, we don't want to get it on the floor. So he pulls into the job, pops open his gate, hits the belt, lifts his cover, truck is empty in a minute. Pretty cool, right? Sweet. It's a beautiful truck, but actually, I have a little something extra, and this is gonna be a labor saver. This thing has not been named yet, because this is the only one in the country, in the world. We may have a contest, someone named this thing. Okay, so now we're gonna show you the caveat of the truck. And this was our idea. This is why I threw away my wear barrels, because I don't think we're gonna need them anymore. Have a nice life. This system right here that we had Trout River build, I actually called Barry, gave him some ideas, just talked on the phone, half hour conversation, called him back the following day, a couple more ideas. By the end of the week, he had this thing on paper. The following week, this was in production. This machine right here is gonna attach to the back of my truck manually, hydraulically. It's gonna spin this eight foot auger there's an auger in here. Our belt is gonna feed this, hit the auger, and this is gonna deliver asphalt right to the ground. Driveways, patching, curbs, asphalt delivery in any spot you want. This is gonna do it all hydraulically. We're gonna set it up and we're gonna show you how it works. Three wheels on it, um, and you can pull this up to the job with it on the truck, use it. When you're done with it, you can take it right off in five minutes, put it right back on in five minutes, go haul asphalt with your live bottom, or use your auger. A little bit of a learning curve here. We have only had this thing off once already, so if we fumble with it a little bit, don't get nervous, but we are gonna pretty much hook this baby up. So you could back the truck up to it, but we are on flat ground, so we're gonna push it right in. It's on wheels. Good? You see the hook on the other side, Matt? Yeah. So the key is that way, the way you drop it is the way you wanna back into it again. Drop it in one spot, you back the truck right up to it, you should be good. Okay, they're in. All right. Now they're gonna hook the pins. So right here. Right here. This hooks right in. There's a little roll pin right here. These clips go on. These are just a helper. These are just a little helper. And look at how cool they did that. Mm -hmm. Trout River does not miss a trick, I'll tell you that. And that locks that baby right in just like that. That's a Canadian thing. Okay, these you put a little pressure on. Put a little pressure on that side. Tighten it up. Put your lock on. Put your lock on the bottom, Josh. Okay. Okay. All right. Come on around here, Shane. You can. Unjack the wheels. Next level shit right here. Unjack the <laughs> wheels. Okay. It's basically on the truck. Okay. It's on. Now you guys know about hydraulic quick connects, correct? I'm going to show you a badass hydraulic quick connect. Hoses, please. See, they even designed a little, little holder for little the holder. hoses. They think of everything. Now again, this is 1.0. I can't imagine what 2.0 is going to look like yeah. when they start making these things. All right, so here's our hydraulic quick connect. Everyone knows about hoses. I'm trying to get hydraulics on. This goes in the cab when you're not using the belt. He's going to simply plug that in. This was actually our idea. Hydraulics on, electric in. This goes back in the cab with the driver. Look at this. We've used this before. Clean. Belt is on. Okay, now we're gonna use it. Here we go, fire her up, Matt. Air back in. Now we have our controls. This is gonna lift the belt up. Belt going up. He's gonna drop his wheel, pull the pin out, yep. Slide it in. All the wheels get locked in. So I have three controls back here. Auger on, up and down, left and right. Our safety chains when we're in transport, right here. Okay, we're in transport mode right now. Now, when you go to use it, 
All I have to do is unhook the chain, put it right here, okay? We're gonna drop it down. Now the driver inside has full controls. Inside, you can work the auger, work the belt, work the door, left or right, do everything. You can also do it from here, but we're gonna give you a little caveat right here. This is what you need, and it was actually the people at Trout River. Uh, Barry recommended it, and it's awesome. <laughs> we have a remote control. The guy in the back can do everything that this belt does. We haven't been to a plant yet where that doesn't fit, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It fits underneath the plant. So it's not like something you have to take off, get loaded, and put it back on. You can pour asphalt as high as this, which we would use on a go over a guardrail if we're paving underneath the guardrail, which is a thing anyone does highways know about paving underneath the guardrail if it, there's, to get the asphalt on the over the guardrail is not easy. So we can start at this height and we can also bring it down as low as this. Now I know there's several products out there that deliver asphalt, things you put on back of the truck. There's even a couple companies around here that have uh, converted cement trucks into asphalt delivery systems. The reason why we wanted to do this was we wanted an asphalt delivery system and we also wanted a truck too. So I'm getting two as one. We're gonna have the belt and when I'm not using the belt, I have the truck. So this belt um, was actually very reasonable price when we drive away I still have a truck so the first thing is this is a two-part door when you're paving the door opens up all the way when you're doing an asphalt delivery system what you can do is you can open up the back gate right here now you could use this without the belt or with the belt when we have the belt on all you have to do is crack it this high what you do is you spin your conveyor and you turn your augers on the conveyor and the auger both have a speed system so you can speed up the conveyor or speed up right the here. auger. So right here, this is our auger speed. speed. So this is maxed out, this is slow. So what you want is once you set your belt speed, you can then tune in your auger speed. That way you don't have to have a on off, it's a continuous pour. This machine has left and right on the controller. So what I could do is I could swing it all the way to the right. Now remember, this is at an idle, so if he gives it a little gas, this will obviously go faster. So we can empty out into a curve machine over here. We can pave augers, or we can pave aprons. Anything you need. You have about five feet, I believe. Four to eight feet, I think. Five feet. Maybe a little bit more from our delivery system out uh, to a sidewalk or wherever you want to deliver asphalt. So we have had a couple of loads of asphalt on this now. And anyone that does curbing, handwork, uh, the other day we did 60 catch bases. We had a winter eye. So around here in the Northeast in the winter, any jobs that we did that were um, just the bottom layer, everything sticking up about an inch and a half ready for the final course. So typically this time of the year, they send us around and they have us go what they call winter eyes, everything so the plows don't hit it. Normally, if you go there with the trucks and the wheelbarrows, if you need 10 ton, you need to buy 12, 13, because this time of the year it's cold, and what happens when you're wheelbarrowing asphalt, or when, however you're getting the asphalt out of the truck, a skid steer, an excavator, dumping it on the ground, there's always a little waste, because the asphalt gets backed up, uh, packed up against the back of the gate. We've used this a couple times, and the other days the guys did 60 catch basins, not one wheelbarrow, and there was zero waste because the asphalt was as hot from the first drop all the way through. So we've used it a few times now and have not thrown away one shovel full of asphalt. Which <laughs> like is that. Maddie out actually pulled the curb machine up here just to give you an idea of how we feed our curber. And you can run it at any angle. Sometimes we have it all the way out. Sometimes we just run it right there. And you just automatically feed the curber. Um, as far as speed goes, we could not keep up with it. The curb machine was full all the whole time. We had to stop delivering actually a lot of times. Typically a curb crew, as everyone knows in the business, the guy on the curber, we actually use a guy to poke the curber the whole time. We have a guy in the back cleaning the curber up, sometimes two depending on the handwork, and at least two guys wheelbarrowing. So you got one, two, 
three, four, five, six guys. The other day we did our first curb job with the first time we ever used the belt. I did 2,000 feet of curb, which was 40 ton of curbing. I had three guys there. Another job we did, uh, I took, we put down 650 linear feet of six inch asphalt curb um, with four guys. And we did the whole road in 45 minutes from the time the truck pulled up till it was gone. Half the guys, half the time. You did a road the other day, it was 300 feet of curbing, yeah. 15 minutes. Okay, 15 right minutes. Nice. Like I said, there's a lot of different systems that people use, skid steers, buckets. Um, I don't think you're going to beat this. Yeah, um, and I, way. I just, I just, I don't even think we've imagined what we're going to do with this yet. But I mean, we bought it for a couple things, but I have a feeling that this is going to be a go-to. We're going to use it all the time. Um, even if you're running a paving job, I think, and you have wide spots, aprons, catch bases, you have to do handwork. Why wouldn't you just bring this and pour your handwork right out in front of the paver? Anywhere you could use it, you should. So, a couple guys asked me why an auger and why not a belt. Anyone in the industry knows that augered material is the best material. You get material that's a little clumpy, might be a little cold, might have hot spots, cold spots. When you auger material through the belt, through this or double auger in here, out to here, it's all perfectly blended, right down to the last shovel. That's why I chose an auger. Like I said, we did 60 catch basins the other day, and the last shovel full was as good as the first. This is at the slowest speed right now, but you can turn this baby up. Crank it. Without um, an acceleration from the, the truck itself. So once you give it a little gas on the pedal, if you want will, to, if you want to, this thing will even go faster. And what I liked about it, what Trout River did, they not only took our idea, but they did a really nice job. As anyone who knows me, I love equipment and I love quality equipment and it's always in the workmanship. I always say like a Swiss watch, when you take apart a Rolex, every part is perfect. Um, and everything here, again, and this is just the first one they ever did, has a spot, it's tight, it's compact. Uh, every hose is, is, is clamped in, tied down. Uh, the workmanship was uh, really, really, we're really happy with the workmanship on the belt. So now our load is empty. You just simply, we even, they even give us a little center belt right here. Now the, also, I can do this right from here. The operator from the truck can also do it from the inside. Belt goes up. There is a hydraulic adjustment for the speed of your movements too, which I think we got to play with a little bit. We feel this one's a little slow. We haven't touched it yet though. Put the two hoses back on and you're ready to transport it. Gone, on to next. As I said in the beginning, I did not do a tri-axle. We decided to go with a six-wheeler with the lift axle, which in Connecticut here, we're legal for roughly 15 tons. Um, this truck is actually weighs about 25,000 pounds with the belt on it. And why we did this and not a longer one, we wanna go into parking lots, condominiums, roads, and we wanna dance on fresh asphalt. Anytime we have a, 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 a curbing job, anytime we have to go back and put on aprons, um, we're very conscious of spillage on the ground and tearing up the new asphalt. That's why we did a short truck with the lift axle because we want to pull into a tight job and be able to do circles with this thing and deliver asphalt where we need it, when we need it, quickly. While we were discussing this build um, and we started it, um, my first instinct was Oh my God, we need two. So yeah, we bought two. We bought two. This way here, I got two of these. They're the only two in the world. This one we got a couple weeks ago. So this is lettered, tagged, license plates. This one just came in. We did do a demo on it. Works just as good, not even better than that one. And we did do two because we figured if we were gonna be doing hand work, curb work, small work what do we do when the truck is gone we can't be waiting for asphalt so when that one's going to get a load we're going to be emptying this bad boy all automatics push button everything and this is the future of asphalt 21st century paving this was my imagination 
Um, the boys helped with the design, called Trout River. Barry picked up the phone, responsive. They are patenting this if it's not already done. And we are looking to do a collaboration. We are gonna market this to the asphalt paving world, not for a monetary thing for us. We are looking to modernize the paving industry. We're trying to get everyone into the 21st century so we can become from bottom feeders, we're trying to become top feeders. The more technology, the more skills that we put into this business and the more we show the world how difficult and high tech this business is, the more money you're gonna make. And that's why we're here today. Thank you. Thank Trout River. Let's get this on the market. Let's start using these babies. We are in. So it's Saturday morning and it's raining outside. We are gonna take these to a job on Monday. Um, don't have any curbing, don't have any patching, but we are gonna use them. I actually have 20 driveways to pave. I'm possibly gonna get these guys set up with the paver. I maybe take two guys and see how many I can do just with, um, with this belt and see if I can go faster than you. Um, they're little short driveways. I'm gonna go grab a couple loads and uh, I want you to come film it so the world can see these things in action. And I did throw my wheelbarrow away, right? You did. It's, it's <laughs> Have a nice life. But first, you gotta get speed. Demon speed. Speed's what we need. We need greasy fast speed. <laughs> Okay, morning world of asphalt, December 5th. We're up at this Toll Brothers project in Danbury, Connecticut. We have 20 driveways to put in this morning, um, which we are gonna use the paver on, but we did wanna finish this video up because it's getting late in the season. And I really want the, the world to see this belt in operation. And I'm looking for your feedback, comments, good, bad ideas, and see what you think of this. These driveways are roughly about five ton a piece, which will just be one pass with the paver but we did put a load of asphalt on this truck and we're gonna do a few of them by hand with this one load. See how quick we can pave these driveways. Now, if there was just a couple of these, we, we feel the beauty of the belt is that if we came in just to do three of these, normally when we come into these projects, we have 20, 30, 40, 50, but occasionally they call up and they need a couple for a closing or they need to get one done. Um, and we don't typically bring a paving machine to do one or two little small binder courses or a top course on a little driveway. So we feel that this belt would eliminate bringing machinery. Um, and by the time you get the paver uh, off the truck, we'll have this thing done. So let's start her up and see what we got. I got the handheld here. Truck just pulled up and we're gonna see what we got. Power my remote up and we are going to go up, take the tension off the chains. Josh, you wanna run the belt so I can talk? Okay, I'm taking the safety chains off. Josh gonna lower the belt down. These driveways are a little bit longer than the belt, so we're gonna have to back her in a few feet. I think once we get to a certain point, we may just put her this way and angle our belt. Okay, Sarah, bring it in. Well, we have used this a couple times, and a big time saving has been, and everyone knows, to get the wheelbarrows and the first few barrels off the chute and get the chutes oiled up, um, take a few minutes. This thing, you lower the belt down, and in two minutes you're paving, which is really cool. Sarah is not my good backer-upper. She's a good driver, but she's not a good backer-upper. She keeps her truck great, though. Inside of her inside of her cab looks like our living room. This is why we did the short truck. No scuffing right here. If you get a picture of the wheels with the lift axle up, and these are the type of spots we're gonna wanna bring this truck into. This is, truck is actually built for small spots. That's why we did a short truck with the lift axle. Really like watching paint dry, though, watching her bring this truck in here. Okay. She's in. All right, here we go. Okay, so Josh simply lifted up his door about three inches. The belt is now feeding the auger. There's actually a double auger in here, about two feet long, a short auger. It goes both ways. It drops it into this small hopper right here. Um, the reason why we thought it was important to go with the live bottom was this feed. 
We wanted it to be a continuous feed into the auger and pour it out. Um, if you put this on the back of a dump truck, which I guess something could be rigged to go on the back of a truck, you'd have to raise the body, drive with the body in the air. That's why we thought it was important to do the live bottom. Um, now he's pouring asphalt. And this is actually the slowest way it pours asphalt. If you were doing a sidewalk or if you could get the truck in here sideways, it's much quicker if you just go like that. So Josh wants a little more, he wants a little more speed on his conveyor, which is done right here. Okay, so he's gonna speed up the conveyor because the more material in here, the faster it'll log her out, but you don't want to overload it. So this way here, there's a little bit more handwork moving the belt left to right. Um, if there was room here, if this was a double wide driveway, he would actually just angle it and pour line. And that way there, you could really pour it nice, but this is working just fine. If you look at the consistency of my material, it's like 20 degrees out here this morning. So you normally you wouldn't be surprised to see a few clumps in the material, um, but with the material being belted down into two auger systems, everything should be blended perfectly. And there should be no chunks. Yeah, no waste here is the beauty of it. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is overfeed the belt. So when the auger's off, you want to try to make sure that the uh, belt is off also. Because you can jam it if you bring too much back. That's why the door, to open a few inches, if you open it up more, it really comes out fast, which we don't want here. Okay, so I got one guy on the belt, one guy on a knockdown rake, and one guy on a finish rake. Um, so we got three guys here right now. So we, we just made two wheelbarrow guys go away, right? I don't have a wheelbarrow. I don't have a wheelbarrow anymore. I threw that in the garbage, right? <laughs> We got enough on the truck to do about three of these. Uh, and then we're gonna go to the paving. We're gonna go to the paving machine. This is just a demo, baby. Plus, you don't have guys at the, at the tailgate talking about their girlfriends in the stock market last weekend. Um, you know, we don't have any uh, tailgate parties here. And now I got three guys on rakes, and Josh is going slow. I, I don't. I mean, if this thing, I don't even think they can really keep up to it. Josh, pull it long ways. Let's show them on the side. All right, so she's going to pull the truck vertically along the side. You can see how the belt's going to go uh, along sideways. Okay. So he probably should have poured one more line a little bit further, another few feet. So he'll pour a little extra and he'll shovel it back. But with the belt out like this, from here to here, five feet. So if you've had a curve and a sidewalk behind it, you could actually pave a five foot wide elevated sidewalk just by driving right down the side. Let him pour a line. Yeah, back her up and pour a nice line. There you go. This is how you want to do it if you can. If you have a experienced driver, this piece right here, he could be doing this right from inside. The driver could do this by himself. You don't even need the guy with the remote. All right, on the driveway number two, no spillage, no cleanup in the road. I'm over here. So if we had the truck here with wear barrels underneath, you would typically have some cleanup here. Some trucks leave more waste than the others, uh, but there'd definitely be road sweeping here. No cleanup. Okay, there it is, roll it. Okay, driveway number two. And do this a little quicker this time. Josh, pour a little more. Good, a little right here. Good. If you saw 
saw how he rigged that out. He would dump and pile with a wheelbarrow. One guy brings a full barrel, the next guy brings a half. Dumps a big pile, a small pile. Um, you can get a really nice evenly spread with this machine. So everything everyone does has a technique. Five minutes? That was better. Um, this is the first time we ever paved the driveway with this thing, so um, it's only gonna get better, right? Two or three right there up. Yep. Beautiful. Couple right there up. Yep. Nice. Okay. We should be close to empty in this load. Asphalt, like I told you in the beginning, still same temperature. Um, I'm gonna show you at the end of the load what it looks like. So if you can get your driver and your belt guy in sync, he pour, he can get the pour almost right down to where there's very little raking. So there's less raking by making it small, even, steady pours. And anytime you handle blacktop, the less you have to rake it, the better it is. Actually, the stronger it is. So this is really good. Less raking is always good. That's perfect right there. You see how he's pouring that line? That's really nice. That's really nice. Beautiful. Try it just a little bit. Get this down and be throwing this away too. Five minutes. So I think the problem we're having is that the roller guy is not going to be able to keep up. Hi, me. Better get on that roller and whacker. Gonna need two guys. No cleanup. And you're gonna see that there's zero waste on this load. And when the load is empty, I'm gonna show you how to put the final clean out on it. Look at this slick thing you got here. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Brand new, only one in the world. Nice. We actually, there's two in the world, we own them both. All right, no offense. Just the boys are gonna do this one, come on. So, five minutes, seven minutes, I mean, I know that doesn't mean anything to a lot of people, but um, here we're on driveway one, two, three. Um, and I actually had to put another guy on a roller, another whacker, um, a vibratory plate, because um, they, they're not gonna be able to keep up. Um, and typically, Doing driveways with a wear barrel, you don't need two roller guys. So this thing is turning out to be really fast. And from here, it's only gonna get better. Uh, I got a green driver, um, and actually we're completely green. Like I said, this is the first time we ever did a driveway with the thing. Um, and everyone's gonna come up with their own little routine, how they do it. But it doesn't seem like it, but that material is coming out fast because of the steadiness of it. It just keeps coming. I might have to give the guys a break in a minute. So today in hydraulics, I always tell you, if, they, if you can think of it, they can build it. And um, we thought of it, they built it. Big reason for this video today. Um, you can contact us with any questions that we can answer for you. Um, you can contact Trout River. Uh, I recommend calling Barry direct. He will pick up the phone directly 
And like I said, this is 1.0. It's is the first one they ever made. Um, I, if this product does turn out to be something in the industry, I can only imagine what it's gonna look like in five years. I can't speak on pricing. If you guys got any questions on pricing, you gotta call uh, Trout River directly. But I will tell you this, um, it was not that bad. It wasn't that bad. Grant, I did buy these two years ago, pre-COVID nonsense. Um, I don't know what they would cost today, but um, when you get the two in one, in my opinion, you got the belt and the truck, um, it's, it's gonna be a no-brainer. So when we go to start using our paver, um, which we are gonna use, because there's 20 of them, there's definitely waste. When you take a dump out here, you're back in the driveway, when you clean out the paver, just driving is waste. This is gonna have, when I clean this tube out, there's gonna be one shovel full. If you have, if we have a two load job and it's up a back road, um, by the time you get a paver machine, rollers up there, you might just bring the belt and rake it in. It'd probably be time saving, money saving, because sometimes it takes us longer to get the, the equipment there than it does do the work. So speaking of waste, I thought this load was gonna do three or four, we're on number four and he's still going. I don't think he has much less, but if you waste a half a ton, you're, it's a half a ton. I just can't help but to think, I'm laughing the whole time I'm reeking because all my life I heard, when I was your age, I grew up, I didn't even have shoots on the truck. And now we got this thing out here. So I'm just thinking, what am I gonna say to my kids when I'm older? Probably be saying that we had to do this in 20 degree weather and they're doing it on their couch on their phone, but who knows? Driveway number five. I'll be shocked if he even gets half of this driveway because he should have been out of blacktop. the whole driveway with that load? Yeah. Holy smokes. Four minutes. Holy smokes, four minutes. It's going faster and faster. <laughs> Maybe we should leave the paver off and just do it with my hand. truck is finally empty. I got a whole extra driveway. I know they're only 30 feet, but not only is this a labor saver, I think it's a material saver too. You don't realize when you do five driveways and you pick up and you move and you spill and the next one and the next one that how much material gets dropped on the ground. So this is key. This is key. So as I said, when you're doing handwork, any type, there's always waste that gets pushed up against the gate. Here we are down to the last couple shovelfuls. Okay, right down to the last crumbs in the corner are still usable. And that's why we put the door on here, because what happens when you crack the door a little bit, it, it's the, the belt is actually cutting the material as it hits the gate, and it's just coming out layer by layer by layer instead of getting packed all up against the gate. And that's the beauty of having the door and being able to control the height of it. Now here's our last clean out. And it is December 5th and it's lucky if it's 30 degrees out here. Look at how hot this asphalt is. Not one chunk, no waste whatsoever. Okay, we're gonna get a scraper. We're gonna clean this off a little bit. A um, little bit, not much. Okay, wanna clean this off right here. Get everything into the hopper. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little degreaser on the auger. I'm gonna run in a couple seconds. This belt is still running. I'm gonna put a little in there. And you know how you can always tell, now don't cut this out. You always know how you can tell a good piece of equipment after you use it, if it's still clean. Then you know it was built well. If you use a piece of equipment and you're done with it, and it's got asphalt and grease all over it, probably not designed well. Or the operators are fool one of the two. 
Now we're gonna come over here. We're gonna reverse the auger, which is gonna give you the full clean out. Put the auger in reverse, which is gonna take everything left over inside. Good, Josh. Okay, we're gonna close back up. Okay, we're gonna come in here, Shane. Okay, right down on the bottom here is a door. This we haven't found. We gotta make the perfect tool. We're gonna make a little tool to spin this thing. Okay, he just opened the door. We're gonna reverse the auger. That is your clean out right there, that's it. It's done. And uh, it's clean, that's it. One shovel full, and guess what? Even that's usable. Even that's usable. So we've used this belt five times, and we've already saved five ton, right? 500 bucks, right? Hook it back up, close up the gate, done. Next. Please don't ask me how come I paved it this way and how come he was standing in or raking it. Everyone paves the way they want to pave. Do not worry about that. I do want everything you could think of about the belt. Possible ways you could use it, um, possible different functions, um, and everything that you, any comment you want to throw about this machine, please send to us because, like I said, why I'm here, don't cut this out, why I'm here, um, my business is already fully promoted. We don't need any more work. Um, if we can show the world the technology, the skill, what you need to do this work, it's going to raise everyone's numbers. And everyone knows everyone needs to make more money. From me, down to my driver, down to my laborer. If we can prove to the world that we're not bottom feeders, um, and this is a highly skilled, highly skilled technical business, and we deserve to be compensated. Thank you. Reach out. Tell me what you think.